Hello everyone, this is John Buck. Uh, this is part two of the Array Game video. If you haven't already watched part one, I strongly recommend you stop this video, go find that on the YouTube channel, and, and look at the general definition of Array Game and how we derive the input SNR. In this piece, we're going to do the output SNR. We're going to derive the output SNR, or as we wrote it a minute ago, SNR out. <clears throat> and so this is the SNR at the output of the beam former. Our beamformer output y is going to be some set of array weights taking the inner product with the observed data vector x. Right, and so we're going to uh, substitute in what we had for x a few pages ago. Right, we said we we're going to put this in for x where we have a signal part and a noise part and put that in. So I now have w Hermitian times A times the signal manifold vector V sub S plus the noise vector. And so I can distribute this W through and I get A times W Hermitian V S plus W Hermitian times the noise vector. And to find the output SNR I need to use superposition and think about these one at a time and say well this first piece this is the we'll call this y sub s, which is the signal component of the output, right? The part of the output due to the signal, the input signal that we're looking for, the desired signal coming from VCS. The second term, v Herm or w Hermitian n, will be equal to is the noise component. So when we put these two together, we can say that the SNR output, the output of the, uh, the signal to noise ratio at the output of the beam former, is the expected value of the power in the signal part, which is the magnitude squared of ys, divided by the expected value of the power in the noise part. Okay, so we're, so in, in doing it this way, we're, we're sort of decomposing the output into the sum of two pieces, the signal component and the noise component, and then we're looking to find the output SNR as the ratio of the power in those two components. Okay, so we're going to break those down one at a time. Uh, first, we'll, we'll look for the expected value of the signal component. So the magnitude of E of expected value of Y of S squared just substitute our definition in to start with. So we have A times W Hermitian times B signal. And we're going to assume that we have a well-designed beam form. So we're going to assume that our beam former W is steered toward the signal. Right, so say when, what happens when we're actually looking in the right place, or the signal is in the place we're looking. Right, when we do that, with a gain, we assume it has a gain of 1. So we have W Hermitian times Vs is equal to 1. And this, is, this has a bunch of names you see in the literature, but it's often called the unity gain constraint. Right, unity like 1. So we're assuming that out of all the vectors w we could choose that are, are steered in that direction, we're going to choose the one where the, the, it's called the unity gain, where it has a gain of 1, or another name you may see for this, uh, and we'll mention again later in this semester, is distortionless response. Right, so I have I, I've taken that. So if I do that, I can then replace this term by 1, And my expected value of y of s squared just becomes the expected value of magnitude of a squared, which we just we can go through the same thing that sigma as a squared plus r squared, or the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared, each of which is has half the power. So when we add them together, it's just back where it was. And, and this makes sense if, with the idea of a distortionless response. We want the output to have all the same power of the input. Right, so by combining the sensors, we've done it in a way that we have not changed the signal power, but we do want to see what's going on with the noise power. Right, so now if we switch to the noise power,
what we find is, is again, substituting in, this is the expected value of the inner product of the weight vector with the noise vector n. And so if I want to, to find the magnitude squared of something, I could say that this is uh, W Hermitian n times its conjugate. So I have W Hermitian n conjugate. And there are a bunch of different uh, directions we could go from here, um, but I'm going to, I think the easiest way or most direct way, if you haven't seen a lot of these before, is to, to write this out, remind ourselves what this looks like as a sum. Right, so if I write that out as a sum, I'd have W Hermitian N. I'm going to take a, I'm going to pretend we index the sensors by letter M, M as in um, Marigold or Martha, uh, that's separate from n, just because we're already using n for the noise vector. So this would be w sub m conjugate times n sub m conjugate, right? And so when we think about the other term here, the second term, well, and just to keep these straight, because I'm going to put them together in a minute, I'll index this one on, on a script L. So when I take the conjugate of a sum, I take the, the, the uh, conjugate of each term, and then the conjugate of a product, I take the conjugate of each term of that. So this leaves me with WL times N sub L conjugate. So if I put both of these in up here for these two terms, what I find is that I have the expected value of the noise component of Y is going to be the expected value of a product of two sums, right? I have a sum over m is w sub m conjugate n m, and then I have a sum over l, script l, of w l n sub l conjugate. So if I think of these, right, the product of these two sums means I get all the cross terms. It's like a gigantic foil if you like, from, from high school algebra. So I'm going to get the sum over m and l of wm conjugate and m and l conjugate wl. And now this is where, to simplify this, I need to use some properties I, I had earlier, which is I said, remember what we said about these noise elements at the sensors, that the noise is uncorrelated, which means that uh, <clears throat> for, for Gaussians, it also means they're independent. And so I can take this apart as a product. Uh, and, and if if m is not equal to l, then this expected value is 0. So all the terms in this sum where m is not equal to l go to 0. So maybe I'll write this a little more carefully. So the expected value of n sub m, n sub l conjugate is either 0 if m is not equal to l, or it will be sigma n squared when m equals l. Right, so if I, if I put all that together, I can simplify what I had here and bring the, bringing this down. I can say this is now equal to the expected, or, and I brought, I, I realized I got ahead of myself there. In doing that, I had brought the expected value inside the sum. So now I can say I do, just need to worry about the terms where m equals l. And when I have those terms, I'll have the sigma n squared, right, the noise term when m equals l. Then I have wm conjugate wm. And so if I pull the sigma n squared out front, this is the sum over m of the multiplying wm by its conjugate is the magnitude squared of wm. And if now at this last step I put this back into vector form, the sum of the magnitude squared of a vector is the norm squared of that vector. So I can say this is the, basically what I would get for the weight vector w. What I found is that the noise gain is multiplied by the input noise variance is multiplied by the magnitude w squared of the noise vector.
So now I have my two pieces. I have my input signal and output signal. Oops. I can show that my output SNR is equal to sigma a squared over sigma n squared times the norm squared of the array weight vector. And so putting all this together, going back to, to my formula for array gain, SNR out over SNR in, Right, so now my array gain against white noise, we finally got our answer, AW is it the output, beamformer output SNR over the beamformer input SNR. And so the output we just said is sigma A squared over sigma N squared times the norm of the weight vector W squared. And the input SNR is sigma a squared over sigma n squared. And so now I can start saying, well, well, this cancels, the sigma a's cancel, and the sigma n squareds cancel, right? So the, the, the ratio of the two SNRs gets simplified, and it's 1 over the norm of the weight vector w squared. So that's a very important thing. This is, this is true, actually, as long as I, the, the only thing this assumes is that I have white noise and a distortionless response. I'm trying to write that a little more legibly. So the assumptions that go behind this formula is that I'm assuming the background noise is white, it's uncorrelated from sensor to sensor with equal power, and that the uh, <coughs> that I have distortionless response or the unity gain. Right, so this is saying that my, right, if I spell those, those assumptions out mathematically, this is saying that my noise covariance or my noise variance is sigma n squared i, and that this is unity gain is saying I'm assuming that when I have the, the uh, beam pattern in the signal direction has a gain of 1. In that case, my, this, this 1 over w squared formula uh, is the, the array gain against white noise. Uh, and we'll see this is a very important result in a lot of contexts. We'll talk about some in class, and the others will come up later this semester. Uh, but, so that's, the, uh, that's the, the material for today of where the, how we get the, the array gain against white noise is 1 over the norm squared of the weight vector. I will, uh, that's all for now, and I will see you next time.